Hey there, I'm here with the one best trick to help wake up your believing family members and friends. Wouldn't you like to know, you've probably tried a couple of things. Well, I'm gonna share with you first what doesn't work, and that is um, you constantly pointing out what's wrong with the church. That's not gonna work for you. It doesn't matter how logical it is when they've been converted emotionally to an institution, you using logical sense is not going to sway them. So that's just not gonna work for you. The other thing is you acting angry and bitter and constantly bringing the conversation towards the church and the problems you have with the church is not gonna work for you. That's just validating to them that I don't wanna be that angry, bitter person. Um, and they're angry and bitter because they left the church and the church was true. So I don't want to be in their situation. Also, if you're walking around depressed, you see anger and depression are both steps in grieving that happen, that when we practice a graceful grieving, we realize that we're actually having a spiritual awakening. And those things are natural things that happen when the backdrop of our whole belief system crumbles to the ground. So us being depressed or lost or angry and bitter and constantly bringing the conversation to the, towards uh, something wrong with the church, it just validates to our family and friends that they need to stay in the church lest that happens to them. So another thing is that we're spending hours and hours listening to podcasts that validate our woundedness. Now, um, first of all, I'm gonna say that the podcasts out there are amazing and the work that's being done to uncover and reveal some of the things that are going on in the church and the abuses that have happened i am not downing that at all keep on going on if you feel called to do that keep doing it it needs to happen what i'm saying is we can actually get addicted to our faith crisis when we're constantly feeding ourselves the the chemicals that are released when we feel validated in our woundedness we can literally become chemically addicted to our own faith crisis when we're constantly needed that we're in a place of victimhood and we start to attract to other victims in our life and what we don't realize it's that um, we're in this place of withdrawal we're withholding we're angry we're bitter we've changed so much about our personality that those who knew us before the faith crisis can hardly recognize us and it really looks like we have issues and we have problems. Even though we feel like we're a stronger person, we really just look like we have, um, we're upset and we're angry because we're still in a place of victimhood. So there's other things that happen um, to us during a faith crisis that to an onlooker who does not understand what it feels like for your whole belief system to go crashing around you, um, that we're, we're participating in that, not realizing that we're validating their fears and validating why they would never want to lose their testimony or never want to read or look at anything that you're reading and looking at because that they don't want to risk losing their testimony and being like you. So this also validates that you were probably offended that you're reading negative anti-Mormon lit literature and information. It also validates to them that you probably have a desire to sin or that you just couldn't live what was being required of you in, in the gospel. It also validates to them that you maybe have been lazy and certainly you have been deceived and lost. So when we're in that state, we are just validating to our friends and family and loved ones that Yes, when you have faith crisis, you turn into a lost, forlorn, angry, withdrawn person. It's all because um, the church is true. <laughs> and that could be a little bit disturbing. So what will be the best thing you can do to wake them up is for you to heal and for you to move on and for you to really step in to the free you and to start creating your life and to start thriving and to start um, living your life joyfully, building a life of meaning and making a difference in the world. And being someone who is confident about your path and where you're going and not being uh, ashamed when you're the only one in a group of LDS people 
that no longer believes and being so confident in who you are and what you believe that you are allowing everybody else to be where they are and you're not a feeling ashamed or small or you're not feeling arrogant or proud that you are able to be in a place of complete peace and groundedness within yourself. That's disturbing. It's really disturbing. What, what are they gonna do with that? So it takes time to come to a point where you're ready for healing. Um, being able to recognize where you are on the spectrum of, of the transition is one thing. And needing to know, you, you can't afford to be wrong about your choice about leaving the church. So you better do your due diligence and you better study and you better do the best that you can so that you can feel confident about moving forward if that's the choice that you make. However, there comes a time when you have to be dedicated to your healing and to letting it go and really moving forward and turning your face and be ready to create a life of your own. And if that's you and you're ready to move on and you're ready to do what I call the four steps of waking up, cleaning up, growing up and showing up, then you might be interested in my upcoming book. It's gonna be out next month. And I have a couple of courses and a couple of products that you might be interested in. Um, either way, if you're choosing to go on your healing path, all the resources are going to come to you because you're focused on healing. And if I have the privilege of being a part of that healing, I would love it. So if you would like to, to follow me on Facebook, um, the link is down below. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can also subscribe below. If you would like to, to set up a strategy session with me, right now I'm available to do that. You can email me and we can set that up. There are many things, ways that we can get connected. So remember, that nothing is more confusing to church members than someone who has become better for moving on. So that's what I wanted to share with you today and happy healing to all of you. Take care.